this video is brought to you by Skillshare. In today's video, we're gonna talk about 10 amazing facts from the early days of Blender, in addition to some interesting stuff that took place in recent years. Number 10. Blender was created inside an animation studio. In 1989, an industrial design school dropout started planning to start his own 3D animation studio. A year later, Neo Geo was founded, not to be mistaken with the Japanese Neo Geo which appeared a year later. The animation studio will go on to garner widespread popularity and multiple awards, becoming the biggest company of its kind in the Netherlands and Europe. The studio and what follows in the next few years will become the pillar of what we all know as Blender. The work that the young Tom Rosendale did with the Neo Geo Animation Studio and the software they wrote was the basis for the development of Blender. Blender was originally developed as an in-house application for Neo Geo, for the sole purpose of being easier to use and highly configurable to facilitate any changes during and after production. Generally speaking, it was built on a series of pre-existing tools, including a ray tracer for the Omega. Number 9. Blender wasn't always free. So when Neo Geo closed, Ton and his partner Frank Van Beek founded Not a Number, which is a company created to further develop and market Blender in 1998. The plan was to offer Blender under a freemium pricing strategy. The software was free to use, but to unlock some advanced features, you needed to buy keys from not a number. For instance, in 1999, to get access to other features, you had to pay $95 because Blender was first released for Linux and FreeBSD. But this would fall short as investors were losing money and the company closed in early 2002. Number 8. Blender almost died, but the community saved it. After shutting down his company, Ton wasn't ready to give up. He decided to opt for a different idea to claim back Blender rights from the company backers. In the spring of 2002, he started a non-profit, which is the Blender Foundation, with the intention of giving Blender back to the community, making it open source to help it grow and allowing people who worked on Blender projects before to have a chance to use it for their portfolios. Back then, Tom probably couldn't imagine how Blender would become in the future, like it is today. In July of the same year, he launched the first ever crowdfunding campaign, which is called Free Blender, and the community answered loud and clearly with more than 250,000 users. The Blender Foundation was able to raise 110,000 euros in just 7 weeks, which was thankful enough to regain Blender from its investors. No wonder Blender had one of the most active and welcoming communities since its inception, as the community is part of Blender's identity and Blender wouldn't be able to be popular as it is now without its generous and thriving community. Number 7. Blender is released under the GNU General Public License. On Sunday, October 13, 2002, Blender was released under GNU General Public License the strictest possible open source contract. Now, Blender source code will remain free forever, and from a business standpoint, this might sound like a bad idea, but Ton Rosendale himself said, looking back, releasing Blender for free was the best thing ever I could have done. The official website of the GNU says, the GNU general public license is intended to guarantee your freedom to share and change all versions of a program, to make sure it remains a free software for all its users. It applies also to any other work released this way by its authors. With Blender being free, many things are now being possible, and the evidence is what we have seen in recent years. Number 6. Blender thrives on donations. Right now, the Blender development is funded of course through the generous donations of the community and some corporate donations in addition to selling merch, support guides, training tools and courses. On the Blender official website, there are different tiers of subscriptions. These subscriptions grant you access to all Blender Institute trainings in addition to product sessions, all open movie files and other features. These subscription tiers range from individual memberships, where there is bronze, silver, gold, platinum, titanium, and diamond, in addition to corporate, where companies can contribute to the development and the quality of Blender projects. For instance, some of the companies that donate more than $120 a year, which are listed as patrons, include Nvidia, Intel, Meta, AMD, Unity, Amazon, and more. According to the annual report, 
the Blender Development Fund garnered $1.1 million in donations for the fiscal year of 2020, and now it is increasing every year. Right now, Blender has more than 2,900 individuals and 37 corporate donors with more than 200k a month. Number 5. There is more than two decades between version 2 and version 3 of Blender. Blender now is entering version 3.4 alpha. But did you know that Blender 1.0 was released back in January 95? This puts 27 years between this version and the first one. Also, between the release 1.0 and 2.0, there were only 5 years. Version 2.0 was introduced as an integrated game engine to the 3D application, and the number of registered users at the time exceeded 250,000. Interestingly enough, the time between release 2.0 and 3.0 was almost 22 years. That's a little over two decades. The reason behind this is versioning conversion that Blender was using. So starting with Blender 3.0, a new semantic versioning conversion is being used, with a major release planned every two years. This means we can expect Blender 4.0 with a much less shorter time compared to the jump between 2.0 and 3.0. If you are interested in learning more about how to learn 3D modeling and animation, I recommend you try Skillshare. It is a learning platform that has thousands of classes on a variety of different topics, including animation, game development, VFX, and more. If you want to learn modeling and texturing in a simple and fast manner, then you should check out these classes by Remington from Southern Shadi 3 d who is a well-known Blender creator and motion designer. He offers two great classes in both modeling and texturing inside Blender, and his classes consist of a mix of tools and tips for self-learning and experimentation. You will learn a lot of useful stuff, especially if you are a beginner, because you will get a good foundation in topology and character creation, as well as shading and UV mapping. You will actually find it very fun and easy to follow the class with him. The pace is also perfect, where you will find short and simple videos, but also very powerful and rich with information. And the good thing is, Skillshare is very affordable, which allows you to easily get access to these fantastic classes. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Number 4. Blender has the largest third party development community. Blender wouldn't be as popular today without the introduction of add-ons, which are scripts and tools that expand or enhance some of the Blender's functionalities. As of making this video, Blender has more than 1300 add-ons, and this falls under many categories like animation, rigging, modeling, simulation, and more. There are a lot of popular add-ons in Blender, including Flip Fluids, Bee Painter, Mesh Machine, Simply Cloth, True Terrain, Scatter, Kirops, City Builder 3D, and many others. But the most popular add-on is the Heart Ops Bundle with more than 24,000 downloads as of making this video. Number 3. Blender has a ton of short films. As a way to showcase the capabilities of Blender and test new features, the Blender Foundation challenges its community's most talented artists to make an animated 3D short film. The first one was way back in 2006, and it was titled Elephant's Dream. A year after that, the Blender Institute was established with the intention of creating open projects related to 3D movies, VFX, and video games. As of making this video, Blender has 16 open projects, with the last one being Project Heist, which is the 14th film in the series, and it will be hopefully released in the near future. Number 2. A Netflix feature movie and a TV show were created using Blender. Speaking of movies, the Netflix feature-length animated film, which was released in 2018, called Next Gen, was mostly created using Blender. The movie went on to garner $30 million worldwide and $2.5 million in China. Maya and the Three is another TV show that was also created using Blender. Number 1. The Monkey in Blender has a unique story. Another fun fact is gonna be the Suzanne's Monkey model. It was introduced in 2002 for Blender 2.25. The model itself was created by the artist Willem Paul van Overbraken, aka Slate 3. The model was used to test textures, reflective materials, animation rigs, and lighting setups as the model can cast a shadow and reflections on itself. But did you know the model is comprised of 500 faces and 507 vertices? 
it's a bit more complicated than most primitives. Also, it is similar to the Utah teapot and the stand for bunny, as it serves the same purpose. By the way, the Utah teapot and the stand for bunny also have very popular and unique stories. To give you more information about the Suzanne's model, the name Suzanne was from the movie Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back from 2001. The model itself became a favorite at the Blender Foundation and went on to be adopted as the company's mascot, even used as a trophy for Blender Suzanne's award for outstanding 3D art and animation. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you want to add something, you can do this in the comment section below. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.